coming up on Fresh Dew with Pastor Inkechi Ene. No matter how much water is rushing from a source, it has to pass through a funnel, child of God. The question is, what is the size of your funnel? What is even the quality of your funnel? If pure water, revelation knowledge, wants to get to you, it has to come through a funnel, the funnel of your mind. That's why we talked about the paradigm shift. Hey, that funnel has to be clean. That funnel has to be wide. If it's a little funnel, it will only take a little. If it's a wide funnel, it will take a lot. If it's a clean funnel, the knowledge comes out pure, the way God transferred it to you. Hello everyone, I'm Pastor Nkechi Ene and welcome to my home and thank you for letting me into your home and into your private place or wherever you are. Today I'm really excited about what I'm here to do. I'm here to give some really good news that gives me a lot of joy. Now before I do that, I'll tell you one fun fact about myself that should give you a hint. I love to write and I love to read. I love to write and I love to read. Yes, you guessed right, my brand new book Dancing with your spirit, being led by the Holy Spirit is out and available. It's out now as an e-book, an electronic book, a digital book. You can read it on Amazon Kindle. You can get it on Akada Books. You can get it on our website. You can buy the book and read it. Dancing with your spirit, being led by the Holy Spirit. And I had the honor of having Reverend Emiko Amoshika write the foreword for the book. And you want to read what he wrote, I can tell you. And this is the book right here in my own library, in iBooks right here. In my own library, there is Dancing With Your Spirit, that's it. And the chapters are right there, and you can open them up. There's a forward, there's an introduction. Section one is who is the Holy Spirit. Section two, you know, talks about who am I. Section three tells you what is a dance. You keep hearing about dancing with the Spirit. What is a dance with Him? And section four tells us what happens when you dance with him. This is 17 chapters of the word of God. 17 chapters that will open your eyes into what it really means as a child of God to be led by the Holy Spirit. So come with me on this journey. Get yourself your own copy. Get it for somebody else. The e-books are available. Okada Books, Amazon Kindle, on our website, and very soon the hard copies will be made available. I'll be back here to tell you. Dancing with your spirit, being led by the Holy Spirit. Hello and welcome to Fresh Dew. I am Pastor Nkechi Ene, and it's always my pleasure to welcome you to every single episode of Fresh Dew. Today on Fresh Dew, we're taking part 18 of our message series, Another Economic System. Our text has been from Isaiah 55, from verses 1 to 13, but in recent episodes, I've just been reading the first few verses, and we'll progress as we go on in the series. So for, from verse 1, Ho! Everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And you who have no money, come buy and eat. Yes, come buy wine and milk, without money and without price. Why do you spend money for what is not bread, and your wages for what does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good, and let your soul delight itself in abundance. Incline your ear, and come to me. Hear, and your soul shall live and I will make an everlasting covenant with you, the sure mercies of David. Indeed, I have given him as a witness to the people, a leader and commander for the people. You know, what I've been doing is trying to do a quick review each time to bring us up to speed. And every single episode, I like to do that. And the other day, I was watching one of the episodes with my husband, and as I was doing the review, he started chanting along with me. So he told me that the review is working. 
And the idea is that faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing. And when you hear the review so many times, you'll finally get it into you. Glory be to God. So let's look at um, the definitions we've looked at. Economy is defined as the state of a country or region in terms of the production and consumption of goods and services and the supply of money. Economy is also defined as the administration of the material resources of an individual, community, or country, the state of those resources. Economic is defined as pertaining to or having reference to economy or to economics, capable of yielding a profit. Section A, getting to know about the system. God set up this economic system that de-emphasizes and even bypasses money. It's a complete paradigm shift, a complete change from the usual economic system. God set it up for everyone, not just for the poor or for the rich. It is for everyone. God set it up to save you from the usual economic system because the spirit of greed operates in the usual economic system. God has made the best available in this system. The, the scripture talks about come and drink, come and get wine and milk, wine and milk. And we took those two words and began to look at them. Milk, that which you cannot do without necessity. We said four things about milk. Milk is nourishment. Milk is divine provision. Milk is a blessing. And we talked of the milk of the favor of God. Then we went into wine and we began to look at different realms of abundance. And we said, before we can talk about the first point, which is wine is a symbol of luxury, we needed to look at the realms that build up to the realm of luxury. And we began for the realm of lack. That's the realm of poverty, the realm where you don't have enough. And then we went to the realm of miracles, which is the realm where you understand what God can do, the ability of God. But we don't want to stay there. Then we went to the realm of purpose, which is where you understand why God does what he does. Before you get into the realm of luxury, which is where you understand how much, how much God can do when you have settled what he can do and why he does it. You've got to settle those two first, the ability of God and the reason behind the abundance. Then you begin to see the explosion of just how much God can do. So what's that word luxury? Luxury is a state of great comfort or elegance, a state of great comfort or elegance, especially when involving great expense, an inessential desirable item which is expensive or difficult to obtain, a pleasure obtained only rarely. rarely. And we said that luxury is approved by God. So going on from today, we're now going to move to something else, still looking at wine as a symbol of luxury. And then a lot of paradigm shift is going to start taking place if it hasn't already, you know, for at this point. Another, another thing we're looking at about luxury is luxury is an expression of the glory of God. We're talking about wine, one of the symbols in this economic system, when the prophet said, come without money, buy wine and milk. We've looked at milk. Now, wine is a symbol of luxury. We said that luxury is approved by God. We looked at that already. Now, luxury is an expression of the glory of God. Pastor Kechi, how did you come up with that? An expression of the glory of God. You know, as believers, when we hear glory, you know, the glory of God is in this place. And that's all good. You know, God chills. I've got, you know, I'm following, following the power, the glory, the glory. And that is the glory of God. Yes, it is. But it's not only, that is not the only way you have the expression of the glory of God. When you read the scriptures, I read the scriptures the way they were written. We shouldn't write the scriptures in the way we can or we're comfortable with it. We've got to read the scriptures the way they were written. So what is glory, first of all? Glory is a word that has meanings in, has the word Greek, in the Greek, doxa, and in the Hebrew, kabod. Both words refer to the glory of God. So when you see doxa or you see kabod, it is the glory of God. So in the New Testament, you find the word doxa used for glory. And the New Testament idea of doxa is representing the Old Testament idea by the word kabod. So we see doxa and kabod are pretty much the same thing, the glory of God. So doxa means glory, apparent glory, a dignity, glorious, honor, praise, worship. The other places you see it means the opinion of God on a matter is the glory of God. Now let's read some things from the, um, where did I get this from? Yeah, the Complete Word Study Dictionary in the New Testament. Doxa embraces, listen now, all which is excellent. We're talking about glory. Luxury is an expression of the glory of God. 
So let's look at glory, first of all. Dogza embraces all that is excellent in the divine nature, coinciding with God's self-revelation. It comprises all that God will manifest himself to be in his final revelation to us. And there's some scriptures. God's glory revealed itself in and through Jesus Christ. Kabod, again from the, the complete word study dictionary, Kabod, the New Testament one, or talking about Kabod. Kabod comes with the root idea of heaviness, weight, metaphorically worthiness. When it is ascribed to men, it refers to their splendor or reputation. When the glory of Jehovah is spoken about, it refers to the revelation of God's person, nature, and presence to mankind, sometimes with visible phenomena. So we're talking about luxury and the glory of God. Let's take a look into the future and look at the revelation of John as seen in Revelation 21. And let's just read it without any um, religious perception. We know eschatology, eschatologically what all of that means. Well, I'm not having an eschatological lecture here. I just want to show you what the glory of God is referred to or a, a, an expression of the glory of God as seen in the scriptures. And you can judge for yourself what the scriptures say. So let's look at Re Revelations 21 from verse 9. And there came one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls filled with the seven plagues, the final ones, and spoke with me saying, come, I will show you the bride, the church of Jesus Christ, the wife of the lamb. And he carried me off in my spirit to a mountain, I'm reading from the Kenneth Woost translation, by the way, to a mountain, great and lofty, and showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, having the glory of God. So this city, this church, this bride, this heavenly new Jerusalem had the glory of God. It's there. It goes right on to say its splendor and radiance as a luminary. A light-giving body was like a stone, like a stone, which is most precious, like a stone of crystal clear jasper. So you can stop there and say, well, that's the glory of God. It was just coming from heaven and it looked so glorious. That's true. But look at some more descriptions of that heavenly city, Jerusalem. And imagine it's describing a mansion down the road from you. How would you describe that mansion? Look at... Um, um, let's jump to probably around verse 16 or 17. And he measured its wall 216 feet in height using the measuring system of mankind, which was that used by the angel. So it's 200, 216 feet like you know it. And the material of which its wall was composed was jasper. And the city was pure gold like clear crystal. This same city that had the glory of God and the foundations of the wall of the city have been adorned with every kind of precious stone. The first foundation was jasper, the second sapphire, the third a chalcedony, the fourth an emerald. Excuse me. These are luxurious stones. These are expensive jewels. And the city that had the glory of God, that came from God, from heaven. Therefore, it, it had to have God involved in it. Look at that. It, and he says, an emerald, the fifth sardonyx, the sixth sardius, the seventh chrysolite, the eighth burial, and the ninth the topaz, the tenth the chrysophyrus, the eleventh the jacinth, the twelfth an amethyst, and the twelve gates were twelve pearls, and each one of the several gates was one pearl, and the broad, uh, the broad avenue of the city was pure gold, like transparent glass, and an inner sanctuary I did not see in it, for the Lord God, the omnipotent is its an inner sanctuary and the lamb. And the city had no need of the sun or the moon to illuminate it, for the glory of God illuminated it. And its lamp is the lamb. And the nation shall walk by means of its light. And the kings of the earth bring their glory to it. If the glory of God was, um, what word do I use? If the glory of God was against any symbol of luxury, God would not have said the city had the glory of God and then began to describe the city as being full of expensive jewels, expensive pearls, and he was, he was part of, he was in that city. 
He was comfortable in that place because he was the glory. Understand what I'm saying? So it, God would not have that um, picture of that amount of luxury if it was something he was averse to. Like we said earlier, God is comfortable around luxury. God approves of luxury. God approves of it. And God, has. we've seen here, that the glory of God or luxury is an expression. Luxury is an expression of the glory of God. This holy city we've just described is said to have the glory of God. Now, this looks and sounds like a movie or a fairy tale or something we just can't comprehend. But that God will sanction, listen, such gross display of luxury and wealth and abundance and talk about the glory of God in the same breath. Now, God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The God we knew in, in the Garden of Eden, the God we knew in the Old Testament, the God we knew in the time of Jesus when he walked on the face of this earth, the God we'll know in the millennial reign, the God who's been God for all eternity is the same God. He is the same. He doesn't change. And if he was comfortable, and we see that, him describing that, I can tell you, child of God, that luxury is not something he's averse to. Remember we said, and I'll keep bringing this caveat, we said the realm of purpose comes before the realm of luxury. You've got to know why. You've got to know why before you can begin to talk about how much. You've got to know why. So luxury is comfortably synonymous with the glory of God. I will say it again. Luxury is comfortably synonymous with the glory of God. You could see me deciding to wear you know, gold. and I'm not, I'm not a loud person in my dressing. But this sounds loud to me. This city we just described looks like really bling, bling loud. If I decided and that was my taste, you don't judge me and judge that the glory of God is not upon me. Or I'm no longer anointed. It could be my choice. My point is this, that luxury is comfortably synonymous with the glory of God. When you have understood the realm of purpose. Now listen, when a blessed man lives in abundance here on earth, when a blessed man lives in abundance here on earth, which is often but a fraction of what God has in store for him, he is criticized and judged often and even cursed out by believers who have the same blessing upon them. When a blessed man walks through the realms of miracles and purpose and understands the why and gets to a point where he begins to manifest the glory of God in a lot of abundance and you know, luxury, immediately he's judged. He's no longer righteous. He's no longer blessed. Oh, that person can no longer be a believer simply because he seems comfortable around an expensive car or comfortable around an expensive house. Nah, nah. What you're seeing is just a fraction of what God has in store for him. So how will believers even begin? How will you as a child of God even begin to contemplate this new Jerusalem? How will you even begin to contemplate cities, avenues paved with gold? You could just go into shock. How would you even begin to contemplate that God himself describes the church, the bride, and he is there with us. And this is what he describes the church as with this level of wealth and abundance of glory. Luxury is comfortably, I'll keep saying this, comfortably synonymous with the glory of God. No matter how much water is rushing from a source, it has to pass through a funnel, child of God. The question is, what is the size of your funnel? What is even the quality of your funnel? If pure water, revelation knowledge, wants to get to you, it has to come through a funnel, the funnel of your mind. That's why we talked about the paradigm shift. Hey, that funnel has to be clean. That funnel has to be wide. If it's a little funnel, it will only take a little. If it's a wide funnel, it will take a lot. If it's a clean funnel, the knowledge comes out pure, the way God transferred it to you. If it's a dirty funnel, dirty with religion, dirty with fear, dirty with the spirit of poverty, dirty with sin, it pours through. And what God was pouring through, a revelation knowledge from his word, by his spirit, you don't get it. The question is, for you to begin to understand that luxury is synonymously comfortable or comfortable 
with the glory, comfortably synonymous with the glory of God. You've got to have the right funnel. You've got to have the right mindset to understand this. And that comes from, first of all, getting it in the realm of purpose. Remember I said some episodes ago, that I want to be at the point where I have so much abundance, so much that I can comfortably live on 10% and give out 90%. And you know, when that happens, not if, when that happens and somebody sees me living comfortably in whatever level of luxury I choose to live in, in with that 10%, I'll probably still get judged. And that person may not know that what they're seeing me live in so comfortably is just 10%. I've given out 90% because I got the realm of purpose before I got into the realm of luxury. So you may look at me in the realm of luxury with just 10% of you know, my income, giving me more than enough. Oh, there she goes. I thought she was a pastor. How can she be enjoying so much abundance? How can she be living large? But what you may not know, that what you're seeing is just a fraction. In fact, 10% of what God has blessed me with. You know, when you understand the reason why God does the things he does, then you really want to get into the realm of luxury. You want to experience just how much God can do because then you become a blessing source. You become a source of overflow. One of the things I said in this episode, in this series, which I'll keep saying, is the choice to be poor is one of the most selfish decisions you can make. And I'll keep saying it. The choice, I say it again, choice. When you choose not to get revelation knowledge, when you choose not to get the funnel wide and open, when you choose not to understand why God wants to bless you and what he can do, it's one of the most selfish decisions you can make. But child of God, luxury is an expression of the glory of God. When you talk about the glory of God, you don't talk about the glory of God without having the ability to talk about wealth, heaviness, kabod, dogza. That's what it means, weight. What is God's, what is God's weight? What is God's heaviness? What does God stand for? What is God comfortable around? What is God trying to get you to become comfortable around? God is a God who is consistent. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And the next episode, we're going to look at how Jesus, in his own ministry, made a statement from the beginning about the glory of God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your word. We give you praise. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for a paradigm shift. Thank you for a change in our mindset. Thank you for seeing things the way you see them and the way you would have us see them. We give you praise, Lord. Hallelujah. You have so many questions about your life and life in general. Why? When? How? What? Who? And the list goes on. Brother, Jesus is the answer to every question and he loves you just the way you are. He loves you too much to leave you this way. He's knocking on the door of your heart. Will you make a decision for a change today? To surrender your life to Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God? If you want to do that, say this prayer out loud, meaning it from the depth of your heart, according to Romans 10, 8 to 13, and you will be saved. Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I believe you are the Son of God and that you died for me and rose again just to save me. Come into my heart and make me brand new as you have promised. I will live for you all the days of my life. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Congratulations on taking the most important decision of your life. You are now born again and a brand new person. It has all happened on the inside of you. We can help you grow in your new faith so that what has just happened on the inside will be surely reflected in your everyday life. Please call us at 0700 freshtu or email us at saved at freshtu.tv. 
and we'll be here for you. Romans 10, 17 says, So then, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You can order today's message and other past messages on our website store, freshdew.tv. It is available on MP3 and CD and also on MP4 and DVD just as seen on TV. Fresh Dew, giving you fresh inspiration and direction for your life. Thank you for watching Fresh Dew today with Pastor Nkichi Ene. We trust you were blessed by today's episode. For further information on Fresh Dew, please call us on 0700 Fresh Dew, which is 0700 3737 If you're calling from outside Nigeria, the number will be plus 234-700-3737-4339. Our phones are open from 9 a.m. to 11 p.m. GMT plus one. You can also send us an email to info at freshdew.tv and we'll be glad to serve you. We also invite you to like, follow, and interact with us on our Twitter and Facebook pages at Fresh Dew TV and also on Pastor Nkechi's Facebook pages at Pastor Ketch. For more information on how you can partner with Fresh Dew and receive Pastor Nkechi's monthly letters and weekly MP3 gifts, please visit our website www.freshdew.tv. Once again, thanks for being with us today and we look forward to seeing you next time on Fresh Dew to receive fresh inspiration and direction for your life.